Welcome back, hikers. Last time, we conquered Mount Nibble and are continuing our chase after Sephiroth. But before we continue our journey here, we have some things to clarify and some things I want to show you. So this is going to be our team heading to the uh, the next town we're going to. Uh, we got all the men and we got Barrett along this time. Tifa's taking a break for because literally she's been carrying me on her back this entire LP. So she's taking a break. Now, equipment wise, we have a bunch of new weapons to show off with Barrett. We have the enemy launcher, which is a very silly name. And we also have the heavy Vulcan. So we're going to be showing off uh, the enemy launcher. We have him with the fire ring because that might be useful for the next boss fight we're about to do. Who has a chance to use fire attacks. Uh, and then, okay. And the next thing we need to show is the materia. All right. This is just to level up stuff because he has double growth on this rune blade. Down here, don't even worry about this. I just have it there. Just because. Alright, I basically set Barrett up like Tifa, kind of? Not really. I want Poison to level up. Since it's already so close, I kind of want it to level up. And But yeah, he does have enemy skill and we need to show off the trine move. Even though we did see it before, I just want to do it again. Um, it basically has all three elements in one move. And I have nothing to put here, especially when I switch weapons, we lose the slot, so it doesn't really matter. I also want to see his death blow animation and his manipulation stance. <laughs> because as we saw with his sense, he does a freaking dab. So I want to see what else he does. Now this is when things get really crazy. So with elemental and fire, it also will uh, nullify fire attacks from that certain boss we're going to be fighting. So that's why I have it like that. And also, right here is very interesting here. So, with added effect, and if you put it with Odin, uh, Vincent's attacks have a chance to cause instant death. And the character, Vincent, is also immune to instant death attacks from enemies. This was awesome to learn about, so I'm probably going to do this setup a lot for... It's really good for Vincent, too. Especially when he goes limit break and you lose control of him. He still has a chance to take out enemies with instant uh, death. So it's really good on Vincent in my opinion. But I might still try to set up on other characters as well. Like Tifa maybe. We'll see. We have long range on him. Because that's the best. it's the best material for this type of character. And counter attack along with the instant death. Yeah this whole setup is a little crazy. And uh, we just have steel because I kind of want to see his steel animation and he has restore as well just in case. In case Cloud can't do it and he still has control over himself. That really is it. Also I learned that about more about Odin. Odin has a 92% chance to hit the enemies and is always at least guaranteed to kill one enemy. Which is very, it's much higher chance than I thought he had. And I told you guys about the Gunge Lance attack, or when he throws his spear, or his lance. Uh, he uses that attack on enemies that are immune to instant death, aka bosses most of the time. So hopefully I remember to show that off as well. But um, for now, let's freaking get the show on the road. Alrighty, so looking around the area, holy crap, where the heck are we on this map? Okay, so we're heading towards this orange dot right in my uh, visual cone here. So we're going to go on a little trip, it looks like. Up there, I don't think there's anything up there. Do, 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 do. Alrighty, so. Uh, anyways, a thing I forgot to mention last episode, though. Uh, if you guys remember way back, and I mean way back, like Midgard days, there was a guy we saw uh, in Eris' hometown who had the number two tattoo on him. And I just want to mention that now because after seeing Nibelheim with all those clones, it now makes sense because now that Sephiroth has shown back up, all those clones around the world are, ooh, look at the enemy launcher. Mm. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention about the sniper CR that Vincent has, it ha its attack percentage is at 200 something. Which is why he's able to do, uh, why he's able to get so many critical hits. Poison Breath missed, get wrecked, enemy launcher looks awesome, and it's super effective. Yes, these enemies are pretty silly looking. They look like, 
Oh, what are they? Oh, what are they called? I don't have. I don't have freaking sense. Oh, what are those things called? Oh, they're in a lot of like mythology stuff that they can turn you to stone. They look like that to me. I don't know. They're in Dark Souls. Ah, whatever. I can't remember the name. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up and put it on screen right now. But, um, anyways. So, all those clones. We saw one really early on in the game in Midgar. And it was number two. And Sephiroth's number one. So, someone recently started doing those. Well, not really recently. But, started those clones. And that number two clone is probably chasing after Sephiroth like the others. Uh, alright. So, we're heading towards this uh, sh tall structure right here, but let's get in one more fight. Let's get in Oh, we can take off the enemy launcher, which looked awesome, and it did awesome amount of amounts of damage, but, uh, I want to see the heavy Vulcan. I am interested in the heavy Vulcan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, we have to do death blow and manipulation, so yeah, I want to get in one more fight, because we won't be doing much fighting. Whoa, look at this place. It looks awesome. We can just have a look around the land, actually. All these nice beaches. I need to actually check the... I don't think there's any enemy skill uh, enemies around this area. But also, so, I want to talk about the secret affection points. Uh, the secret affection point system in this game for the dating mechan mechanic, sorry, is... Oh, here we get. We have these guys again. Okay, Heavy Vulcan looks awesome. Can we just say that? Oh, let's do steel. Let's see what his steel thing looks like. And we will do death blow. He just runs up. He runs up on him. <laughs> Let's see death blow. Hold on. <laughs> what the heck was that Donkey Kong move? That was hilarious. I love it. Oh, man, that's funny. He just runs up on you. Manipulate. Oh, we got him. Oh, we got him. Voucher task. Oh, did you- did I shoot him? Oh, thank god. Alright, finish him off. Alright, well, we got Velcher. Claw and Poison Breath, Poison Blow. Not anything we can really use. So, hit yourself! Yes! <laughs> Alright, he snapped out of it. Hit him up! I love his death blow animation. That is super silly to me. I want to see Vincent. I want to see Vincent immediately! I'm going to swap out Steel and put it on Barret and swap that out. Ooh, yes! Yes, but the secret affection points is very true to life. Like, we don't get feeling or emotion gauges in real life, you know? And it was a very, it was a surprise to the new players back then playing this game. Where one person got a date with Tifa, let's say, and then they talked to their friend, and their friend got a date with Eris, and it opened up all these possibilities. And there's really only four possibilities, but uh, it was just kind of crazy, and it's very unique. It only happens in Final Fantasy 7. That type of choice dating mechanic only happens in Final Fantasy 7. Hold on, let me think about that before I say that. 6, no. 9, no. 8, no. Yeah, I think it's only... And the other... The past... The future games after 10, I don't really know. I don't really play them because they suck. So... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I think it's only unique to number 7. So that also is another special thing about 7. You have a lot more choices, I guess you could say. Uh, Deathblow... Manipulate was it was it's the same point type thing, but I like I like Tifa's a lot more, but um, okay So let's put it on him And put steel on Barrett. Alrighty now, but uh, yeah So I just want to talk about that. Anyways, we'll just head on into this town here. What does that what is that structure? Let's see What's that? That looks awesome. Oh, I love the look of that. A rusty old rocket. Wonder what they'd make something that huge for. Huh. Hello, sir. Better ask the captain about this town. He's the one in charge of it. Huh? The captain? Who's the captain? The captain was a pilot when Shinra was still interested in their space program. Hmm. He was going to be the world's first astronaut. But there was an accident. Ever since then, he's been wasting his life away he here dreaming about going into outer space. Did you see a man in a black cape? A man in a black cape? Nope. Don't know a thing about that. Alright, so he kind of answered both questions for us. And he leaves town! Anyways, 
We are in a town with a rocket. We might as well call it Rocket Town. <laughs> yeah, so this is Rocket Town. Once again, though, I love the aesthetic of this town. Um, I mean, just overall, I love the look of this town here, but also that aesthetic of technology being overrun by nature. I love that look. So uh, this town's really cool. So let's look around. This looks like a weapon shop. Oh, yes, it is. Look at all these freaking Tommy guns. There's a ton of what look like antique guns. I bet the owner of this store is a real gun fanatic. Ah, so does he sell a lot of guns for Barrett and Vincent? Oh, shoot. I didn't even know that was a door. Is there anything else we can interact with? The gun in it. How am I talking to you right now? <laughs> I'm actually. That's a glitch. That's a glitch. I don't want to talk to him like that. That's funny. You can talk to him through the wall. Oh, a toilet. A nice pristine toilet at that. Yes. I love this town. Hello, sir. A gun is a man's weapon. Ain't nothing else will do. Oh, no. But what about a buster blade? <laughs> I think I'm man enough to hold a buster blade. A shotgun. Wow. All right. So you get a bunch of weapons for Vincent at this point. Makes sense as we just got him. So, uh. Yes. Okay, so basically... Okay, yeah. So we're definitely getting the shotgun. Looking good. Two slots, both mixed. And we want two of these because we already have one from stealing it. And... Wow, we still have a lot of money. That wasn't much for a gold armlet. 2,000? That seems really cheap to me. We have power wrist. You can get an extra power wrist. But getting extras of things isn't really useful to me, at least, because you only have three characters. So you pretty much fill out everything uh, with your characters. Earring, magic plus 10. I might get this. Magic plus 10. But we already have MP plus. So does that really... What does that even mean? Is it, It's magic power. Because earrings, especially in Final Fantasy VI, the earring relic was amazing. Especially when you did double earrings. Oh my god, that did so much damage. Uh, so actually, I might just get this. For old time's sake. Yeah, whatever. We have money. Right? Okay, so we did that. I also need to sell this. I bought this a long time ago for absolutely no reason. Get out of here. Price for master. Oh, wow. Through AP. Interesting. You get different prices. I didn't realize that. Oh, wow. Huh. Holy crap. Look at the price. Huh. Gil remaining. What does that mean? Anyways, I never sold material before. We have some things to sell here though, don't we? Uh, plus, no, we still need to put that on him. Motor drive, we can get rid of. We got a better version of the motor drive. Wiser staff, I don't know. I haven't used Eris. What feels like ages. We can get rid of that. We just got that. We'll keep that. We haven't found any more of these in years. 12 in a set? Hmm, we have time. We have time. Quicksilver, we can get rid of. Yeah, we haven't heard this theme. This is the theme that played in, uh, oh, God. It played in Sector 6? The, um, the Black Market Town? Market Town, wherever? Uh, where, uh, freaking Don Corneo was. God, that took a long time to remember. Enemy Launcher, uh, we'll just keep it for now. Platinum Fist, Silver Armlet. We can get rid of. Because we now have the gold ones. Fire Fang uses fire too on all enemies. We have the power soul. We'll keep that. Peacemaker. I like the name of it. And. Oh, the gem ring. We got that last episode from the boss. It protects you from paralyzed, petrified, and slow numb. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty freaker, baby. Get rid of the grand glove? Grand glove? Do we want to get rid of that? Anyways, we have money. Atomic scissors we can get rid of. We're actually going to get a replacement for that in this area. Mithril armlets can go. Yes, they can. Freaking, freaking go. Alrighty, cool. We did our selling. We did our shopping here. Thank you, sir. I still disagree about the gun being a man's weapon. I hold a buster blade. I have to... Alright, so let's equip these guys right now before I forget. Alright, so gold armlet, baby. Oh yeah, baby, baby. Yeah. Ooh, I like the way you shake your big booty, girl. Ooh, I like... Should we just give him the shotgun now? But yeah, look at the attack percentage. That's why he gets so many critical hits with this weapon. So honestly, it might be better just keeping the sniper. 
But um, I'll do the shotgun. I'll do the shotgun for now just to show it off. It didn't change anything with that, so that's fine. I also gave him the power wrist. Uh, just because his strength is nutty right now. Like, he's freaking Tifa strong. <laughs> this still has a lot of... Oh, wow. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, Material-wise, no. Okay. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. All right, let's check this out. This is the inn. I'm actually going to take a nap here because Cloud needs some stuff. Hello! Huh. Is it real or fake? That? That looks like the Mona Lisa. <laughs> it definitely does. Nice fireplace. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Shanghai Inn! It's 100 gil a night. Would you like to spend the night? Yes! Yes! It's okay. Sephiroth can wait. Sephiroth has patience. As we've already learned. Ah, that was nice. Sleeping with a vampire. Yes? Hello! A drink will ease your heart. Hmm. Would you like something to drink? Let me hear your story. Did you meet the captain already? He's really the town's representative, so you should really talk with him. Okay, this captain guy sounds very important. He may know where Sephiroth is. Oh, what the freak's going on in there? <laughs> Hello? Sir, are you okay? Do you need Pepno Bismol, sir? Hello? I'm in here. Hi. Hey, I need to take a shit. Ah! Get out! Oh, this reminds me of the time with Rolando. God, he made a mess. See how these ends look? Yes! This, these beds look super comfy. Oh, yes. Oh, the, that is the smallest bathroom in the world! <laughs> Holy crap! You can't even fit in- Barrett can't fit in there. Are you kidding me? Alright, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Alright, so let's continue our shopping. There are some items to find in this town as well. Hello! That rusted out rocket is all that remains of Shinra's space program. Huh. Alright. So you can sneak over here into this house. Sir? Are you, everything's gonna be okay. It's fine. Hey! Hey! Calm down. Ah! I'm so bored! Isn't there anything that can get me excited? Uh, maybe playing Final Fantasy VII? I don't know. Jesus Christ. Is that what you say? All right. Cool. Woman, your your husband needs video games, I guess. Jeez, it's boring. Isn't anything exciting going to happen here? Ah. So this theme this seems to be the theme of this town right now that ever since the space program went down under, it's just been rather simple. A very simple life here, which honestly, I would want. Why don't you I like do you want to see Midgar, sir? No, you don't. You don't, trust me. You wanna see a freaking coral prison? Gold saucer, go to gold saucer. There's some excitement there for you. Hello, old man. This used to be a Shinra base where they used to launch rockets. You saw that leaning rocket, right? The leaning tower of rocket? That's a Shinra number 26. It's never got off the ground though. Huh, what the? It just looms there. That's how the town got its name, Shinra number 26. Want to look at the rocket with me? And you want to say yes to this. Yeah, let's take a look. I, I want to look at it too. I just love it. I love this look, especially with those clouds in the background and the forest surrounding the area. I got so impressed every time I look at it. I get so impressed I look at it. Sorry to get you into this. For me, it's kind of a hobby, but out of appreciation, let me give you this. You get the Yoshi Yuki! I wish you'd take care of it and use it. So this I never knew about, but if you talk to him twice and look at the rocket with him, he gives you a Yoshi Yuki, which is super Japanese. So it might be for a character that... Oh god, let me arrange this stuff. Battle, boom, okay. So let's find it here, shall we? Did I pass it? Holy! Sword is used when an- Sword is used when an ally is down. It's for Cloud. Oh, this is the katana! Is this the katana? Oh my god, the slots suck. But I guess when a 
when one of your allies dies, you, Cloud automatically attacks? Oh, I kind of want to check that out. Oh, we're definitely going to check that out. Um, right now? Nah. Just kidding. Tyler literally won't forgive me. It's the katana. Oh, that looks awesome. Okay, so we're kind of going to just hit bear it up. Like, we're kind of... We're, we're going to just... Nice miss with your shotgun. <laughs> How did you miss with a shotgun that close? 444 damage. Try again, Vincent. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Does... Oh, does the shotgun do fire damage or something? The shotgun looks awesome, by the way, as well. Barrett just... Yes, they are destroying Barrett. Oh, my God! That was amazing. Like, the, the critical effect on freaking uh, Vincent is impressive, to say the least. All right, he's on the floor. Finish yourself off, Barrett. What are you doing, Fang? Don't howl at me. Come on. Just freaking die. <laughs> Barrett. For one, this one time, Barrett. For the fans. What? <laughs> Hello? What's happening? Ah! That did 900 damage. That thing looks amazing. Um, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, um... It did more damage. It did 900 damage. Does that what... Is that what that means? Sword is used when an ally is down. Maybe it has something to do with the name. But, um... Anyways, we're going back to this. I'm gonna go back in bed. That blade looks awesome. Okay, so that's how you get the katana. There's also another secret in this town and other items we can get beside the Yoshiyuki. Hello. Huh. Let's see. Do I know any good jokes? My job's to make everyone laugh all over the world. Make me laugh! What? You suck. You suck. You suck at your job. You're a terrible comedian. Oh my god, if that's your job, freaking tell me a joke. That's usually what those kind of characters do. They have terrible jokes. Here's a power source. So that's one of the items. It just increases our strength. Fantastic. They have some nice toilets here. That is... Oh, it's a shower. Okay. That's... Okay. Gotcha. F you, dude. I'm taking your power source. Because you didn't tell me a joke. Alrighty. So now we go... Over here. Yeah. I think we just go in here. Oh, wait. Did we talk to this guy? Everyone in this town was a mechanic back when they were planning to launch the rocket. Okay, interesting. Some nice lore. Wait, where's the freaking... Wait, did I go into every... No, I didn't go in here. I only talked to the guy and started freaking out. Here's the item shop. Alright, hello sir. This is the item shop. Yes. Alrighty, do we need anything here? We got some Phoenix Downs. Holy crap. Holy crap. And we got Barrier. Barrier is new. It's basically, um, you get physical barrier, magic barrier, and, uh, probably something else. But it's kind of pointless because we already have big guard as an enemy skill. Exit takes you out of dungeons, and also, when you level it up, you're able to just instantly make an enemy... You just send them away. Like, <laughs> it just takes the enemy out of the battle, and we already know about time. So... Uh, yeah, that's all that's here. How much ethers? Oh. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, let's look around this place. Nice. All right. All right. Nothing else in here. Ah, this. Okay, this is a Easter egg in this town. Um, this picture, if you know anything about Final Fantasy, who does this look like? That is a picture of Sakaguchi! That is Hironobu Sakaguchi, the creator or the producer of this game and the games before it and Final Fantasy IX. Uh, that is the creator of Final Fantasy. As a very pixelated picture, it's just an Easter egg, just a secret. They put him in this town 
for no apparent reason really just because they wanted to and um but it also to me it might have to deal with the character that we meet in this town but we'll talk about that later all Grimms does is gaze at that rocket all day I would gaze at it too it's a beautiful sight but yeah that's the Easter egg that's Hironobu Sakaguchi and it clearly looks like him too he has the mustache and everything back what that's what he had he still looks the same today like he's still like he's just a little bit older but holy crap he hasn't aged a bit much like most Asians they just don't age <laughs> they just do not age um okay so there's only one more item to get and I believe it's in this house hello anyone here hello yeah it's right here all right and we got the drill arm which as you can already tell is for your boy uh barrett here it has double growth it's much like it's the it's the rune blade double growth no connected slots uh yeah <laughs> yeah that's the thing we'll show that off mm. we'll just do that whatever Whatever, it's not that big of a deal. We have Vincent and Cloud with us. And AK-47's back here! A bunch of, uh, rocket models. This guy seems to be obsessed with the rocket as well. I don't know what the freak this is. Is it a car? Is that an engine and then those are the seats? I'm not too sure. Looks odd. No one's here, though. Hmm, let's check back here. Hey, look at that. Oh, Vincent looks so cool. There's a Shinra logo on it. Tiny Brocco. This is cool. The Shinra always keep the most useful things to themselves. Let's steal it. <laughs> Barrett! Um, may I help you? Oh! Hello! No! We're just stealing it. I mean, looking at it. Yeah! If you would like to use it, please ask the captain. The captain should be in the rocket. I'm Shara. And what are your names? I'm glad. I'm Barrett of Avalanche. Vincent. My occupation is... Forget it. Hmm. So you're not with the Shinra? I thought the approval for the reopening of the space program came. Huh? President Rufus is scheduled to come here. The captain's been so restless all morning. Rufus! Damn. Looks like things are about to get rough. So this is the tiny Bronco. It looks awesome. I love the tiny Bronco. <laughs> I love the tiny Bronco. Alright, so we just met Shara. It seems we need to go talk to that captain. I don't know why we want it. I guess we need to get to the other continent, maybe? It doesn't... It's not very clear. But I'm just going to say it. Our friends need to get to the other continent, it seems. But they don't really explain that very well. Was Shara in there? I... Or does she just disappear again? Because if she's in here, I kind of want to talk to her. Nope, she's not in the bathroom, and she is not down here. Okay, so this is where the captain lives, it seems. Okay, so let's go see him at the rocket. Do, do, do. Hope your days are going fantastic, by the way. Yeah, I never showed off trying. I literally never showed off trying. Whatever, we saw it before. Tifa will use it one day. I may have to use it in the boss fight. Oh, yeah. I love this place. It looks awesome. Look at that. Shinra Type 26. It actually says what the old man uh, told us. Alrighty. Continue up. Ooh, okay. So do you guys, just speaking about space for a second, would you guys want to go to space? Any of you out there? Are you guys interested in space? Like, there's so much out there we don't know about. There's a lot of Earth that we don't know about, in the, especially in the deep ocean. But space, it's kind of scary to me. It's kind of scary. Because there's like so many suns and different planets and things. Ugh. Do you guys believe in aliens? <laughs> I just like how Cloud looked at you. <laughs> hello, sir. Uh, hello. What are you guys doing here? We heard the captain was here. <laughs> captain. I'm the captain. Alright, everybody. This is Sid. Ah, uh, yes, Sid. The grumpy father figure of the group. Um, as always, and as you guys may recall from past LPs I've done, in every single Final Fantasy, there is a character named Sid. Uh, his full name in this game is Sid Highwind. 
Uh, Highwind also being the last name of a character in Final Fantasy IV, Kane Highwind. Kane High. Kane Highwind. Wow, that was way too hard to say for some reason. Uh, who was a dragoon in that game and one of the best characters, uh, which also relates to Sid here, as we're going to see in his um, battle mechanics. But Sid here, uh, actually, there's a direct co uh, quote. I can't talk right now. What the fuck? There's a direct quote from Sakaguchi himself relating to Sid as a character and an entity throughout his Final Fantasy games. And it goes as, There really isn't any deep meaning to it. We just wanted to make a character that would appear in various forms in all the games. I guess I've always had a soft spot for that kind of character. Sid is like Yoda from Star Wars. Very intelligent and wise. And that quote is from 1997, which is uh, when this game was made because this game was very famous um, back in the day. And it still is, of course. But um, yeah, uh, he just, there really is no reason why he made all these SIDs. But um, every SID is super smart, but their personalities and upbringings in every Final Fantasy are very different. Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 7 those are the only two games that have it so the SIDs are playable characters in your party, uh, which makes it very unique compared to the other SIDs who are just NPCs. This one is, out of all the SIDs, this one is the biggest asshole of them all in a good way. Uh, he's very much like my friend Rolando, who curses like a sailor, and much like the SIDs, Rolando always ends up in conversation, much like these SIDs end up in these games. But, um, we're gonna love Sid. This is Sid's theme. Um, it is very ambitious, um, fitting for a dreamer like Sid is. It's very loud, much like Sid is. So, <laughs> he looks awesome. I love his art, and he's a great character. We're gonna enjoy him. The name's Sid. Everyone calls me Captain, though. Well, what do you, what, what do you want, huh? Okay, tell me about this rocket. Wow, not bad for a kid. Alright then, I'll explain it to you. You know Shinra developed a lot of techn technological gadgets during the meaningless war, right? Now it's a macro company, but in the old days, it was a weapons manufacturer. Well, they came up with a rocket engine. Woo! There is so much excitement about it. The, the thought of going into outer space our dreams got bigger and bigger. They put major budget in it. Uh, they put a major budget into it and made prototype after prototype. Finally, they completed Shinra number 26. They chose the best pilot in Shinra. No, in the world. Me. I mean, come on. And finally, we get to the day of the launch. Everything was going well. But because of that dumbass Shinra, the launch got messed up. That's why they became so ANAL! And so, Shuna nixed their outer space exploration plans. After they told me how the future was space exploration and got my damn hopes up, DAMN THEM! Then, it was all over once they found out Mako Energy was profitable. They didn't even so much as look at sp space exploration. Money, moolah, dinero! My dream was just a financial number for them. Look at this rusted rocket. I was supposed to be the first man in space with this. Every day, it tilts a little more. At this rate, I don't know which will come first. This thing falling down, or me getting it out of here. My last hope is to talk to the president. Oh, come on, Sid. Sid! Sid! Don't be sad. It's okay. Sid! I, you actually have to leave the area, I think. Walk back in, and you can ask him the other questions. He just gets really upset about that story. But that's Sid's story. Is Rufus coming? Yeah, it must be news about restarting the space program. A young president. That's what we needed. He still has dreams, too! <laughs> I hope so, Sid. Can we borrow the tiny Bronco? <laughs> you are your fucking mind! That's my most cherished possession! I can't let you take it! 
<laughs> Sorry, Sid. <laughs> so, yeah. Sid, I love voicing Sid. Because he just gets all the stress out of me. I get to curse my freaking life away with Sid. Oh, man. But, um... I have a lot to say about Sid, uh, his dialogue, uh, his charming dialogue, and I mean that, his very charming dialogue. Him and Barrett's together, but uh, we're going to save that for a second. There's another scene with Sid I want to show off first before I talk about that, but that's Sid's story. So, apparently Shara did something, so let's go back and uh, have a chat with Shara and see what the heck happened. Alrighty, so all we have to do is just go back into here. And she should be in here. I hope so. Ah, excuse me? Cloud? You saw Vincent doing a Naruto run! <laughs> Did the cat just say anything? Nope. What? Cl Cloud, you're a freaking liar! Literally last episode, or, or two episodes, two episodes ago, you said I'm not lying! You're a liar! Oh. Are you blind? We got guests! Get some tea, bitch! Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry! Damn! Making me look bad. Really, don't mind us. It's, it's, it's alright. Shut up! Sit your ass down in that damn chair and drink your goddamn tea! Ah, oh, damn, I'm pissed! Sure! I'll be in the backyard tuning up Tiny Bronco! And make sure to serve him some tea, alright? Damn woman. What the hell? Damn, man. What's up with that guy's attitude? He's making me look bad. <laughs> so now we have another character in competition of who curses more. Barrett or, Vi or Sid. And I brought two characters that you shouldn't disrespect women around. Don't disrespect women around Barrett. Don't disrespect women around Vincent. Holy shit. <laughs> He's going to be like, Lucrezia, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> He's just going to start shooting things <laughs> about Lucrezia. But, um, so this is where I wanted to talk about. So, in the remake, voice acting will take away and assassinate two characters in this game. It will take away their characters as a whole. Um, Barrett and Sid. Their foul and vulgar language and slang is part of their charm and their character. And you can see it in Advent Children how it negatively affects them in that movie. Uh, this is another reason why this, uh, the remake needs to be rated M for Mature. To even have a chance of preserving Barrett and Sid's dignities as characters. Um, otherwise, they are just dumbed down versions of themselves, not as passionate, and it's just, the things they say is very awkward, um, because everything, and it's, it's a lot more cheesy, very cheesy lines come out of them in Advent Children in the movie and Dirge of Cerberus because they're rated, uh, they're not rated mature, they're not allowed to curse like how they do in this game, and, um, really just, that's the voice acting. That's what voice acting and why the remake needs to be rated M. And this game in general is dark enough to be rated M. As we saw in Midgar. And I've told many times why this needs to be rated M. To even have a chance at least being okay to me, I guess. But, um, yeah. Sorry. It's our fault. No, no. He's always like this. It's amazing that you can live with it. No, it's because of my stupid mistake. I was the one who destroyed his dream. What happened? Hey, get your ass in gear! You work like a snail! Even in the moon get even the moon get tired waiting around for your ass. I'm sorry. Don't take so much time checking that fucking oxygen tank. Shara, being careful is good, but it won't do any good no matter how many times you can you check that oxygen tank. That thing wouldn't break even if hell froze over. But, and if you hear this theme, it's just a sadder version of uh, Sid's theme. No buts! You're not stupid. 
So be more efficient. I'm sorry. Captain, our dreams are finally coming true! We are so proud to be part of the launch of Shingo number 26! Captain, preparation is complete! All that's left is liftoff! Yeah! Leave it all to me! I'll be back in a few! Sid without his goggles. Alright, Captain! Fire our dreams into outer space! And another thing I want to mention about his design here, he's not he doesn't have his goggles on, and on his goggles, he actually has a, um, a pack of cigarettes. And if you think about what happened, he's been wasting his life away ever since this incident happened. So after this incident, he started smoking and wasting his life away and doing other bad uh, habits like that. So I literally just realized that and that's awesome to notice. Like they don't even explain that, but you can see it. You can still see it even with these terrible graphics the kids say. Thanks guys! We're praying for your safety! Instrument panel, all clear. Shooting number 26, ready for launch! Engine pressure number 26, three minutes to launch, we can't go down! Finally! What the? What, what happened? Sid, we have an emergency situation! A mechanic is still in the engine section of the rocket! What? Who's the little bitch? I don't know. Activate the air and common engine section. Hey, goddammit! Who's the little motherfucker still down there? It's Shara, Captain. Don't mind me. Go ahead with the launch. Shara! What are you still doing down there? I was still concerned. The results of the oxygen tank test weren't satisfactory. You stupid little cunt! It's gonna be so hot in there that there, there ain't gonna be shit left when we blast off. You're gonna be burnt to a crisp. You're gonna die. You know that, don't you? I don't mind. If I can just fix this, the launch will be a success. I'm almost done. Almost done. You're gonna die, Sid. We must start the countdown. We won't make it if we don't. Starting the engine. W hey, w wait a minute. Sheriff's sure still in here. What are you going to do, Sid? If you can't now, it'll be another six months until the next launch. God damn it, Sheriff. You want to make me a murderer? Captain. Sheriff. Tank number seven check is complete. Once I complete tank number eight, it's all clear. Come on, Sheriff. Hurry up. You're going to die. 30 seconds to ignition. Begin a countdown. Sid, forget about her. We won't make it in time. What? What am I supposed to do? What? Uh, damn it, Sid. 50 seconds till ignition. Until temperature rising. Oh, man. The moon. Out of space. My dreams. Ignite the engine! SHIT! He pushed the emergency engine shutdown switch, aborting the mission to save my life. After that, the space program was cut back and the launch was canceled. It's my fault his dream was destroyed. That's why. It's alright. I don't care what the captain says. I live my life for him. Holy shit! Sheriff, you still have a certain date! I'm sorry. 
Holy hell, woman! Hurry up and sit down! Or, or ain't my hospitality good enough for you? Shit. They're late. There's Rufus. Hey, hey! Long time no see! So soon, how you been? Well, if it ain't Fat Man Papa, how long were you figuring on keeping me waiting? So, when's the space program going to start up again? Hey, hey, I don't know. The president's outside, so why don't you ask him? Fuck, good for nothing, fat motherfucker. Get out of my way. Don't say fat. Damn. Hey, hey, D. Can I have some too? With lots of sugar and honey. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't forget the lot. What the hell? Alright, so that's the story. I love that cutscene too, how it shows how the town used to look back in the day, and how it shows it in present time. A very, very good story, actually. I love that cutscene. It's really well done. Ah, Sid gave his life for her, started smoking, and has just been wasting his life away. Ah, good, good. It's nice. It's nice. I like it. Is President Rufus here to announce that he's going to restart the space program? And now Shara just get it, her life's dedicated to this man. <laughs> uh. Hey, hey, have we met before? Hey, hey, is the tea ready yet? We're plenty of sugar, Lord! Dude, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, um, yeah, Shara's not going anywhere without Sid at this point. So it, it's kind of like they're married. Not really, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Let's have a visit with Rufus. What the? You got me all excited for nothing? Then, wh wh what'd you come for? I want to borrow the tiny Bronco. We're going after Severoth, but seems like we've been going in the wrong direction. But now, we think we know where he's headed. But, we have to cross the ocean. That's why we want your plane. Shit! First the airship, then the rocket, and now the tiny Bronco! Shiro took out of space away from me, and now you want to take the sky away from me too? Oh my. You seem to forget it was because of Shinra Incorporated that you were able to fly in the first place. What? Uh, excuse me. This way. They're trying to take the tiny Bronco. You wanted to use the tiny Bronco, right? I believe Palmer's going to take it. Why don't you talk to him? Oh, Jesus Christ. The freak, we can't let the fat man take it. Hmm. Why do I have to do this? I'm the head of the space program. What? He was the head of the space program? Oh, my God. Why? Hold on. Hold on. You can only fit three people on the tiny Bronco. Don't ask me why I know that. You can only fit really two people on the tiny Bronco. Don't. Don't. Doesn't Shinra have an entire Air Force? Ah, oh, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. We'll be taking that tiny Bronco. I've seen you somewhere before. I know, the Shinra building, where the president was killed. Ah! Security! Yes, the boss fight is against this guy. Time to shut this nutcase up. Huh? Alrighty. So, yeah, this guy's a freaking silly asshole. <laughs> Don't you dare spank your butt at me. Oh, death blow. He just spins his gun even more. <laughs> he, just, he just spins his gun even more. Big guard. All right. So, Head Ass McGee has a Mako gun, which uses ice, fire, and lightning. Which is why we actually gave fire ring and fire elemental and all those defensive stuff. Yeah, that's why we did it. Odin. Odin! Let's hopefully he does Gunge Lance. Mako Gun. Ooh. Ooh. Stop it. Please stop it. Stop. Okay. Did I just get Limit Break? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Drill Arm. Oh, he's doing it! Oh! 
sorry. That's freaking damage. Drill arm. God, that does nothing. Holy shit. Clem Hazard. Holy damage. Did you guys see that damage? I'm not sure if you did. Holy crap. I just did defend by accident. I meant to do trying. Holy god, you're getting your ass beat, Palmer. You're getting your ass freaking beat. <laughs> you can keep spanking your butt. I don't really care. You're, you're gonna get it. You're gonna freaking get it. Where's trying? Trying. You're freaking taking it right now, buddy. Taking it. That's trying. That thing looks awesome. Macro gun. Alright, let's heal Cloud. Oh, wow, my cursor is... Okay, I think I got him. I freaking think I got him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Vault 2, there's fire. Of course, he didn't shoot the people I have protection of for fire against. Fire 2, fire 2, fire freaking 2. Boo. Oh, I had the shotgun. I should just shoot him with it. Come on, Palmer. Get on the floor. Just freaking die. Yeah, <laughs> Is he dead? What are you doing? Oh, ah! Whoa! That was close! <laughs> See you later, suckers! Jesus! <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that happened! Holy sh- He's dead! Palmer's dead. He just got ran over by a random truck. I think Sid was driving it. An Eden coat. What is that? I forget. I think Sid was driving that truck. I forget. Actually, no, it wasn't. It's not going to stop. Forget it. Get in. So apparently Palmer turned on the tiny Bronco. By the way, no one is controlling this thing. <laughs> no, yeah, this is it. Oh, it was Shara. Come on, Sid. Come on. He just outran a freaking airplane. It was Shara who ran him over. Shit. The tail's been hit. Emergency landing. This is gonna be a big splash. Hold on to your drawers and don't piss in them. She won't fly anymore. Can we use it as a boat? Look at Sid. He's so upset. <laughs> Fuck! Do whatever you want! Sid, what are you going to do now? Don't know. I'm history with the Shimmer, and I've given up on the town. How about your wife? How about Shara? Wife, don't make me laugh. Just think about marrying her gives me the chills. What are you guys going to do? We're going after the, a man named Sephiroth. We'll have to get Rufus of the Shinra someday too. I don't know about any of that, but... What the hell? Sign me up! <laughs> okay, Sid literally joins because he has nothing else to do. I love him. He's so bored. He's just like, what the hell? Uh, Sephiroth, whatever. Uh, he doesn't even know about Sephiroth. He doesn't know that Sephiroth is freaking like a god. He's just like, F it. I want to fight him. <laughs> Sid, he strictly joins because the Shinra just didn't give him another shot at freaking space. How about it, everyone? Do whatever you like. <laughs> Glad to be aboard, numbskulls. <laughs> Barrett didn't even give a shit. <laughs> Numbskulls. 
Yeah, anyone stupid enough to go up against Shimmer nowadays has gotta be a numbskull. <laughs> I like it. So, where we headed? Rufus is going after Sephiroth towards the Temple of the Ancients. Okay. Really? Where is it? That Temple of the Ancients? Don't know. That numbskull kid was telling me he was heading the wrong direction. So maybe it's off this way? Let's just head for the land and get some information. Temple of the Ancients. That name really bothers me. So we're at the north part of the world. So basically, we want to head south. <laughs> we want to head south. So that means Sephiroth literally led us across Mount Nibble for absolutely no reason. Thanks, Sephiroth. But now the tiny Bronco, it can't fly. But we can use it as a boat in shallow waters and rivers. Players can get on and off at beaches. Alrighty. So, yeah. So right here, it kind of leads you to this beach right here. Which, if we get the map up, is this continent right here. And we'll be talking about this continent next episode. Um, yeah. For now, we're going to just kind of ride around in the tiny Bronco. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. That's Sid. He literally has nothing else to do. Um, we need to land, and I need to put him in my party. Where the freak are we? Okay. So, yeah, we kind of want to land right here. But, um, yeah. So, now we have that character. And next episode, we will be getting our final character. I know! It's crazy. Like, and how in quick succession, we just got Vincent last episode. We just got Sid, and we're about to get our last character. It's crazy, right? But, um, yeah. So... Next episode is a very special episode. It's kind of like a bonus episode. So hopefully I'll see you guys there.